Well, what do you know? I was reading some new stuff today about the drill knots and stuff with Mark Garneau and oh my goodness, it's <laughs> about the nightmare stuff again. I'll talk about that a little later. I don't know if this is actually like a more recent interview, but it has a little bit of some uh, different stuff. He actually mentions about listening to people from the quote community, guys. Uh, one of the first things that caught my attention today when I was checking out my messages, uh, this one actually did because yesterday remember how I was talking about uh, in terms of just uh, talking about drones, how things like videos would be a good way to raise awareness. So that's kind of caught my interest. I got an email here saying uh, there was three days left for this um, story hive competition which is actually for BC here. And they were saying things like um, you could uh, gather people, I guess, to help make a film. It could be for like documentary educational reasons or whatever. So I thought, hey, that'd be kind of cool to do for drones. I was in uh, trying to read the requirements for this because the deadline was pretty tight because I only learned about it recently. And it said uh, one of the key creative members must be female. I was like, oh, I don't know any females that fly drones that would be interested in doing this. I was like, oh, tough luck for me. And I was thinking as if finding the producer and director and all that isn't hard enough in itself. I mean, try finding like someone that's passionate about drones and all that too. Oh, it's too bad. I would have loved to work on something like that, even for fun, like just to raise the awareness and all that. Because uh, in many ways, I think people, yeah, they need things like the films and all that to show people, hey, they're not dangerous stuff and look at what you can do with them. It makes me think again of what I said yesterday. Everything comes in like full circles. They're all interrelated. I guess like the more stuff I get to do, the better it is for all the other things as well, like raising the awareness. So I guess I have to kind of, uh, find more places to collaborate with people, to meet different people, I guess, because obviously I'm not meeting the right places, Why I can't even find like what female drone flyers in my area who'd be passionate about stuff like this. And speaking about uh, drones and the police, like from yesterday, if you guys remember, I talked about that one where apparently somewhere in Calgary, they were looking for the guy that's flying this big drone or whatever around the airport. And I was actually just reading this news today. It says drone leads to fugitives arrests. Now, apparently this is based in the US somewhere. And if I'm not mistaken, I just quickly uh, glimpsed at the article. There's something about a guy that was firing like bullets, like from a gun at a parked car for whatever reason. And then it says here, a police drone spotted the suspect walking near power lines along the tree. And then a SWAT team, uh, you know, took over and they took him into custody. I don't know, like in this case, it's not about a story about like trying to find another drone flyer. But again, like if law enforcement and other countries are using them in a good way as well, while at the same time allowing recreational people to fly them with reasonable laws, I mean, why aren't we doing that here? Instead of being so uh, crazy and paranoid, only thinking of the negatives that it do, I mean, look at the benefits it can do too. So I've been looking for the new uh, drone regulation proposals because as you all know, it should be introduced uh, this month. And uh, basically I read this piece of news at first. I was like, hey, is this it? But then as I read the title, Nightmare Drone Scenarios Keep Mark Garneau Up at Night. I'm like, oh no, am I going to get nightmares from reading this now as well? <laughs> so it seems the first the article spends a lot of time emphasizing how uh, Mark Garneau, like the transport minister, the guy that made these really stupid uh, drone laws, are, he's basically like an astronaut. So it's emphasizing the point like, hey guys, if an astronaut, a guy that's been in outer space is so afraid of these drones, then you should too. So for those who don't know, like his nightmare scenario is kind of like, I think it's a famous quote now with the drones. It's basically like say a 250 gram drone flying up the air, crashing into an airplane and you know, knocking the whole thing down. So it even says here, um, and if that's Garneau's nightmare, it should probably be ours too. At the same time, I think what needs to be considered just based on the things I read is like he's an astronaut, but has he been a drone flyer? Because in many ways, it's completely different. Kind of like what I said, for example, I don't think someone with a pilot aviation background can fly a drone safer than someone like me with a tech background, as an example, who's used to using analog controls. So in that sense, I think the judgment that he has is a little clouded, which is my concern. I mean, it's kind of like saying, he might have been an astronaut, which technically you're up in space and all that, but would he be equally as, um, I don't know, gutsy as say some parkour guy that can jump like from building to building with that steep heights? Because you would imagine, hey, if an astronaut can like resist or whatever or not be afraid of heights that high, how would you try doing like parkour? Would it be the same thing? No, it's a different skill set. Or would he be able to skydive? Like same thing. Like I think you have like a clouded judgment if you don't actually, um, you're not involved in the hobby itself, like using the actual product. Because just to my knowledge, the fact that this transport minister, as I said before, retweets like fake uh, news, for example, of drones and all that just shows that he's not knowledgeable of the topic. Actually, this quote was actually really interesting. Someone with like a science background would have to like, you know, be more analytical with this, but it kind of reminds me of the debate I was having with that uh, commercial helicopter pilot saying uh, things like, yeah, you shouldn't consider like uh, birds or whatever a relevant issue when comparing to drone safety because it's something that Transport Canada can't, um, manage or enforce, if that makes sense. And apparently says here, uh, he says, birds are light and fragile, made of hollow bones and feathers, Garnell says. 
drones are made of metal and contain lithium batteries. Like again, it requires someone with more of a scientific background to do the actual test, but to me it seems really weird to think like uh, the bird or whatever, like it shouldn't be a concern or whatever, it's less dangerous than say the drone itself. Plus how about the size of the birds that fly? I mean, a lot of them are actually bigger than drones themselves from what I see, even with like the geese and stuff around here. It's like I don't care if you're an astronaut in space or whatever, like if you've never flown a drone yourself or have a specific interest of it to be super knowledgeable, then you're judgment is really clouded. I mean, for this it says, Garneau notes that his time spent with the NASA program has made him particularly uh, safety conscious and that he seeks to take proactive approach to the issue rather than wait for calamity to strike. I mean, I could say the same thing, like just with the way these laws are proposed. It would be like me saying like, hey, I study martial arts and I know there's places that are dangerous, for example, like some places that do it really irresponsibly. Like some people use like real weapons, for example. Um, to train. So should I, for example, make a law saying if you run any type of martial art class weapon, quote, just the word weapon should be barred in general. Like, do you know what that defines? That means even people like training to use like sticks, for example, they wouldn't even be able to do that. Like in my opinion, you shouldn't be making like dumb laws because you don't understand everything. Like for me, if I only knew one kind of martial arts, for example, like my mind is like from what I see in the movies, for example, martial art weapon must be like a huge sword blade, ban them all, just say the word weapon. Like that's not right. You have to understand everything. Like just because you have experience in one particular field of that industry per se, doesn't mean you're necessarily knowledgeable about everything. And again, to me, this just shows that he's ignorant about drones in particular. Actually, funny how people always compare like, hey, why can I fly a kite and not a drone? <laughs> Look at that dangerous kite, folks. This quote here where he says, his concern is the ever-growing number of recreational drone operators who don't need a certificate. You know, in many ways, again, to me, this is part of the closed-minded aspect of it. Like, you think, like, for example, like, people that fly drones are doing it commercially, for example, all the time. I mean, no, that's not the case. I mean, some people are flying like these really small drones as quote toys, like kids for example. Like in that case, there should be a clear, distinct difference. Otherwise, to me, in many ways, that would be like saying um, the government is concerned that kids are riding tricycles like on the regular sidewalk. Like he's worried like they should all be certified. Like, <laughs> come on. Like for me personally, again, like I think a licensing system or registration is okay, like in certain circumstances, like depending on the complexity of the uh, drone and all that. But yeah, in general, just wanting people to be certified to be certified, like again, to me, a piece of paper doesn't say anything in terms of how safe someone is. It depends on things like how they're using it, um, how I guess the tech is in general. And again, big difference from a little, small, tiny drone flying it like in a park versus like some huge uh, industrial one used to transport items. Because I feel anyways, if you don't try to uh, make the distinct difference, because right now to me anyways, it feels like you know, if it flies regardless of whatever, it's a drone, it's dangerous. Like you're not really uh, distinguishing like what's the difference between this and this. It would make me think of like say guns or firearms in general because that's in many ways, that's how they're treating it. Like every type of drone, regardless for most of the part, is like a firearm. But it makes me think too, like even with guns in general, how ridiculous would that be if you don't distinguish the difference between a quote gun, like not just based on the shape. There's a water gun, a paintball gun, a pellet gun, a gun with an actual bullet, for example. I mean, they're all different, right? But like in many cases, if I were to relate like again, the drones, the guns, like in this case, it would be like people would still say, nope, just anything that looks like a gun or whatever in general should be gone because then they would say even with the water gun, well, think about it. People could fill it up with something flammable. They could shoot it out with a water gun, light a match in front of it and turn it into a flamethrower. Look, it's a weapon now. So you should ban them still. Like to me, like, okay, that's really ridiculous. This court actually talked about uh, how we uh, kind of debated before whether or not the laws are actually effective in reality. Like, does it actually stop like the bad drone flyers or like, the way it's written, it just stops law-abiding citizens? Uh, so it says here, uh, we have strict interim orders for now and shortly we'll be coming up with some final regulations because I just don't want to hear about the awful catastrophic or catastrophe of someone not knowing about flying a drone close to an airplane, Garneau says. This is one's actually kind of interesting. If the drone is big and they are getting bigger all the time, they can cause a lot of damage. <laughs> I mean, again, to me, for the most part, I mean, if a guy is going to be stupid and fly near an airplane, they're going to fly near the airplane regardless whether or not you have these regulations in place or not. I mean, in my opinion, anyways, the only people you're stopping is like myself from flying like an open field like this. 
Again, not to say there shouldn't be any laws or restrictions and all that, but in my opinion, it's more about education. And don't make it so stupid where it actually just affects the law-abiding citizen. You're like saying, hey, cars are getting faster and faster. Does that mean you should like just outright ban cars just because one car could go at, I don't know, I'm just exaggerating, but 300 kilometers an hour? Does that mean because of that one car or one guy that drives in the racetrack, whatever, that crazy, that you should ban everyone else just because like that car can go that top speed? Like I would say no, like treat that situation on a case by case basis and don't make the thing so ridiculous where it affects the regular person. Man, at this rate, I seriously am interested in him describing in detail of what his nightmare was, like specifically, the size of the drone, how it hit, and all that. This clip was actually really fascinating. It said, um, regardless of the danger, Garneau realizes there is a, quote, community of people out there who don't like these measures, complaining they make it impossible for them to enjoy recreational drone flying. Does that community include people that make videos? <laughs> so it makes me think, uh, yeah, you guys comments and stuff, they actually listen to it. Like, we're not, it gets through their thick head is another question. Uh, it goes on to say here, uh, yes, there are people who know what they're doing and who are responsible and no question, drones can do great things, he says. My concern is not them, it's those who really don't have the knowledge about what they're doing in the Canadian airspace. Okay, on paper that actually sounds really reasonable, but unfortunately in reality, you did go after people like me. With the way the things were written, unfortunately, like I'll use the word again, unfortunately, it discriminates against a large group of people, just the way it's written. Now obviously at this rate, it's a little too late to change the interim law since, you know, permanent proposals or whatever is supposed to be introduced, but still, it's completely ridiculous with the way it's written. 75 meters away from everything, nine kilometers from all heliports and airports and all that, regardless of the actual situation in hand. I mean, to me again, this is just about thinking very narrow-mindedly. I mean, in terms of like our being worried about people not knowing what they're doing in the uh, Canadian airspace, I mean, it's true, like in many cases, like for those select people, for whatever, those idiots that aren't gonna fly in the airport, like again, they're gonna do it regardless. But in terms of having no knowledge of the Canadian airspace, I can almost say the same thing that the transport minister, like Garneau, you have no knowledge of how everyday Canadians are nowadays. But in terms of knowledge, I mean, again, just to show how stupid like the laws are, I mean, in my opinion, like I said, again, it's about education and practice. You're stopping people like me from educating people like how to fly a drone uh, safely, to show them what it's like, because your laws are so stupid. Like, I can't even fly it in open fields like this anymore. We then go to the other quote saying like, well, pilots have to go through under like rigorous process to become a qualified pilot. Again, there has to be a distinction between the way people are flying it and how. Like, yeah, if someone's flying like near an airport, doing it for commercial reasons, transportation, flying dangerously close to like, I don't know, a very heavily populated area. Yeah, yeah, like by all means, like get them certified or whatever. But for example, a kid flying here, or someone shooting like a video for fun? No, it has to be different. And in my opinion, like for like transport managers, like guard, no man, you're completely out of touch, like with a regular Canadian. And again, if you want to educate people, which I think is the key, okay, to make things more safe in general, don't make stupid laws that stop regular people from flying it, like in a safe manner. Now this last quote is kind of what I had a concern in the beginning, like to me anyways, when you read about this, it's not really about safety when you think about it, like you add up all the facts of pilots that have accidents or even commercial pilots, like technically, they shouldn't be able to do the things that a uh, recreational flyer can't do as well. It says, I don't ever want to be in the position if something were to happen, having people immediately say, why didn't you do something? I mean, unless I'm interpreting wrong, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, to me, that sounds more like this is for political image. You don't want to be known as that guy, for example, where if someone did something stupid, you're afraid the whole public's going to come out and scold you and say, you're the worst transport minister in the world, you didn't do anything. So instead, you're just basically trying to ban everything because you think it'll give you a good image in that way. I mean, I would imagine in many ways, like as a politician, it's your job in many ways, or as the transport minister, to listen to everybody regardless of what they um, say to you, whether it be good or bad, and then to make the laws in a very unbiased manner, as fair as possible. But for me, like to read this, to say, oh, yeah, you just don't want like people to say if something crashed and hey, you didn't do anything. Like to me, that's not a reason to like pass really stupid, ridiculous interim drone laws. Actually, it kind of makes me think again, like I said before, um, if this is all about political image and not wanting to be blamed for something, I mean, you have to think of the long term too. I mean, for people like me, 
I'll probably remember Garneau always as that fear-mongering drone guy that took away opportunities like for people that are using the tech or for youth to discover like how drones can help them in everyday life. I mean, in my opinion, you'd be remembered as that. So it works both ways as well. Am I the only one here where if there was a drone that crashed into a plane, like someone doing something stupid, would anyone really come out and say, oh, it's all your fart, Garno? Or would people say like, no, that's just like, you know, one idiot. What can you do? I would say the same thing like when it comes to like cars or whatever. Unless he was actually promoting people like, you know, yeah, for sure, go ahead, fly right into that airport. Like, good job. Like, that's completely different. But I, I've never heard of anything like that. Well, so that's kind of interesting. I guess it gives us a little bit more insight into what is on his mind like when it comes to those uh, new laws. Uh, again, to me, for the most part, it just reaffirms what I kind of thought before. It's not even so much about safety in general. Like, I think anyways, like from quotes like that, it's more about things like, you know, like the image, like I have to look like I'm doing something. I mean, it's not just based on like this one thing too. Like, I mean, some of you guys said, like, for example, you've never seen Transport Canada or, you know, the minister published a video or anything like that saying, we want the public's input. Can you please help us with this? Like nothing like that has happened. So again, to me, it's not even really about safety anymore. So obviously you don't feel the pressure at the moment, unfortunately. Oh, what do you guys think? Is there hope that the laws will actually be good? Or is this uh, quote, for example, just reaffirms in many ways that, uh oh, we're in for a really rough ride. Uh, but I hope people continue to uh, voice their opinions, make great videos and all that, like even if it's for fun, because I mean, like here, if the main concern is he's afraid of what people will say about him, then again, we just need more people to actually bring up the issue to show them how dumb like the law is in many ways. In terms of that, like what other people think to you, it kind of reminds me of like, say, um, an executive person or a manager in some kind of business insisting that if they don't uh, make these ridiculous uh, guidelines, force people to work like a robot, for example, that um, they're going to look like a bad manager because it doesn't look like they're doing anything. When in reality, like some of the best managers are those people that actually allow people, like they give them the ability to do things like in a free way, obviously within reasons. And to my opinion, like those are the best types of leaders or managers, if you want to call it. For a person to fear monger people say like, well, you can get hurt in this, so I better treat you like a baby. Like those are the worst in my opinion. All right, in many ways, I feel like Garno, you'll benefit a lot by stepping into the regular Canadian shoes, fly a drone just like a regular person so you can realize how ridiculous the law is. I mean, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you're just stuck in a room all day like you're not used to the average regular life anymore. So hopefully you'll actually get out there and see what it's like. All right, see you guys later.